Welcome to our video introducing and demonstrating an exciting new web application that was developed by the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology and the Nevada Division of Minerals. Let us briefly introduce ourselves before beginning the demonstration. My name is Rachel Mikander. I am a GIS analyst and geologist at the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology. And my name is Lucia Patterson, a GIS specialist and geologist with the Nevada Division of Minerals. The goal of this project was to develop a tool to help explorationists identify and discover mineral resources throughout Nevada. It is intended to be a one-stop shop to show what data sets are available. GIS data were gathered from NBMG, NDOM, USGS, BLM, and the USFS. Datasets contained within this application include themes such as geology, exploration, mining, precious metals, industrial minerals, geothermal, oil and gas, and many more. When using this application, users can download specific datasets, save maps to PDFs, search layer information, and view data without any special GIS skills or software. This project is the result of a collaboration between the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology and the Nevada Division of Minerals. Additional input was provided by the USGS as well as a group of beta testers. This slide shows how to access the Mineral Explorer web application. We will pause here for a little while so you can see the links. These links are also included in the video description and in the email announcing this application. To access the application from the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology's homepage at mbmg.unr.edu, click the Maps and Data link on the left-hand side of the page, shown here with the orange arrow. This link takes you to the NBMG Open Data site. Click on Web Applications near the top of the page, again shown with the orange arrow, and then click on the link to the Nevada Mineral Explorer web application. Accessing the application can also be done through the Nevada Division of Minerals webpage, which can be found at www.minerals.nv.gov. Scroll down to the Important Links tab and select Open Data Site slash GIS Files NDOM. Once you reach the home page for the NDOM Open Data Site, scroll down the page a little bit. Once you scroll down, you will see a description of the Nevada Mineral Explorer with a link at the very end of the description. Simply click on the link and the application will open. This is a web-based interactive mapping application. It is best viewed on a laptop or desktop but it can be viewed in the browser of a mobile device. This app will display differently based on the device it is being viewed on. When first visiting the application, a window with the MBMG and NDOM disclaimers will appear before you can use the application. Please read and click on the checkbox next to the text that reads, I agree to the above terms and conditions, then click the OK button. Now, it's time for a basic overview of the application layout and tools. Helpful links are located at the top of the web application and include links to the Nevada Mineral Explorer Facts page, the NBMG Open Data Site, and the NDOM Open Data Site. Map navigation tools are located on the left side of the screen. Web application information is located here. When you open the application, this dialog box appears by default. The legend can be viewed by clicking the icon that reads Map Key. You can change base maps by clicking here. You can save a PDF of the map by clicking here. You can draw or measure on the map with this tool. 
and you can use the search box to search a few select data sets. There is also a selection tool, an add data tool, and a download data tool. Layer lists and data categories are all located here. Data in this application are organized into nine different categories. Each category is depicted with its own unique symbol, which we will go through shortly. Depending on the user's device and screen size, not all of these categories will be visible in the application. If this is the case, another icon will appear on the right. Click on this icon to see hidden layer lists. Categories include occurrences and production, exploration and development, mineral resources, geology, geophysical, geochemistry, mining claims, technical reports, and reference data. The source of the layer is indicated in parentheses next to the layer name. Occurrences and production includes layers containing active mines and energy producers, historic production from 1987 through present, mineral resource data system, and the U.S. Min topo mine symbols. The exploration and development category includes exploration plans, mining plans, notices, and drill projects from 2005 through 2018. The mineral resources category includes precious metals, significant deposits, industrial minerals, oil and gas wells, and geothermal wells. The geology category includes a geologic map of Nevada, the Stuart and Carlson geologic units, terrains and domains, geochronological database, biostratigraphy, and a geologic map index. The geophysical layer includes a complete bouquet anomaly, isostatic gravity, and magnetic anomaly. The geochemistry category includes soils geochemistry and NURI HSSR data. The mining claims category includes active mining claims point listings, active mining claims listings per section, and historical mining claims, which are listed by county. Technical reports includes 43101 reports, and reference data includes county boundaries, mining districts, existing land withdrawals, proposed land withdrawals, proposed land releases, greater sage grouse habitat management areas, land status, PLSS, topo indexes, and a NAEP index. Now I will pass this over to Lucia to give an overview of the map navigation tools. Users can use the map navigation tools to zoom in or zoom out in the map area, zoom to Nevada, pan to your location, zoom to the previous extent, or zoom to the next extent. Other useful tools include the information widget, which has a link to the user's guide. Basic information about the application can also be found here. Scroll down to see additional information and to view a complete list of layers included in the web app. Click the small X in the upper right hand corner of the dialog box to close. Moving to the right, the legend shows which layers are turned on in the layer lists. This is helpful because the layers exist in separate categories. The legend provides a location for users to see which layers are turned on without having to click through all of the layer lists. The base map gallery contains 12 different base maps. The simple topographic base is turned on by default. Users can save the map they have built in this application by using the Save PDF tool. Simply press the Print button to create a downloadable link of your map or click the Advanced button for additional printing options. Here, users can set map scale, turn labels off or on, include a legend, and set the map size and print quality.
The draw and measure tool allows, allows users to calculate area, draw routes, and plot locations. Click the first button on the left to draw a polygon on the map to measure area. Users can choose from acres, square miles, square kilometers, hectares, square yards, square feet, or square meters. Click the middle button to measure distance or route on the map. Users can choose from miles, kilometers, meters, feet, yards, or nautical miles. And click the button on the right to retrieve exact location information. This can be in the form of latitude, longitude, decimal degrees, or degrees, minutes, seconds. Use the search bar in the upper left-hand corner of the application to search specific layers. Enter keywords into the search bar or click the drop-down arrow to the left of the search bar to choose which layer to search. Type in the value you wish to search and press the magnifying glass. Search results are returned on the map and pop-ups will appear for the search results. To select data in the map, click on the selection widget located in the upper right-hand corner of the map. Grayed out layers are layers that are not currently visible in your map. To select any of the grayed out layers, navigate back to the layer list and turn them on. Click the layers you wish to select in the box to the left of the layer name. Then place the cursor over the area of interest and left click to drag and to draw your box. Release when finished. Selected features will appear highlighted. Use the three dots to the right of the selected layer to view the selection actions such as viewing in the attribute table, creating a separate layer, or viewing statistics. Use the Add Data tool to add your own data or other data to the Nevada Mineral Explorer web map. Data can be added from a URL or from a file on your computer. If adding a shapefile from your computer, the files must be in a zipped folder. Any data that you add will not be stored in the application or on our servers. The data you add during your session is removed as soon as you close the browser window. Click the URL button to add data from the web. Sample URLs are shown by clicking the sample URL text. Types of URLs that can be added include ArcGIS Server Web Services, a WMS or WFS OCG web service, KML files, GORSS files, or CSV files. Click the download tool to select layers to download. Downloadable layers will all be listed in the download data widget. This list is long and all layers are turned off by default. Click the box next to the layers you wish to download and select the area of interest on your map using one of the drawing tools. If you wish to redraw your selection, click the red icon and redraw. Once you are satisfied with your selection, choose the feature format from the drop down and click run. Depending on the area and the amount of data layers you are downloading, the tool may take a few minutes to run. When the tool is finished running, click the output zip file link to download the data. And now I will pass it over to Lucia to give a quick tour of several NDOM hosted data layers and pop-ups. In this part of the demonstration, we will navigate through how to use the pop-ups that have been configured for the mining claims, mining districts, counties, notices, and plans. Let's briefly review how the claims, notices, and plans have been plotted. The data is pulled 
from the BLM's LR2000 database about three times per year. The PLSS description of each claim, notice, and plan listing is linked with the PLSS description of the calculated centroid for each section. Therefore, claim point, notice, and plan listings plot in the center of the section. For the claims, the sum of how many claim listings are present in each section has been calculated to generate the active mining claims per section layer. If you would like to read the specifics on how the data is plotted, select the three dots to the right hand side of the layer name and select item description. This will display the metadata. Let's get started with the demo. Active mines and energy producers have been turned off. Under the mining claims section, active mining claims per section and active claim point listings have been turned on by checking the box immediately to the left of the layer name. The map key button from the upper left hand corner of the map has also been selected so we can view the legend. Under the reference data section, county boundaries, mining districts, and the PLSS layers have been selected for display. Notice that the county boundaries layer is grayed out. This means that you either need to zoom in or zoom out to view this layer. In this case, we are zoomed in too far. This can be changed by clicking on the three buttons to the right of the layer name. When you do, a drop-down list will appear. From the list, select the Set Visibility Range and adjust the markers to make the layer appear. For this demonstration, the white marker on the right was moved to the right of the black triangle, which makes the county lines visible. I am going to go ahead and close the layer list so we can have more viewing room and less distraction. We will keep the legend in view. The legend only displays what is currently turned on in the map. Now I have selected a section and a pop-up has appeared. Note, when you select a point on the map, it will select everything that is present in the map at that point. You can see how many items have been selected by looking in the upper left-hand corner of the pop-up where the black arrow is pointing. Notice it says one of three. This means the pop-up is displaying one of three items that have been selected. You can navigate and view these selected records using the triangle under the green arrow. We are going to maximize the pop-up so we can see all of the text by clicking on the square under the orange arrow. Once we do, the pop-up expands and we can now see the entire pop-up, which is giving us information on how many claims are in the selected section. And it reads, this section has 50 active mining claim filings as of February 6, 2020. This is section number 32, which is located in Township 17 North and Range 21 East. The meridian is 21. If you would like to find out more specific information about the active mining claims in this section, you can either one, select the circles in the middle of the section and scroll through the pop-up that will appear, or two, you can search the BLM's LR2000 database by clicking here. But before we click here, note that the query parameters are listed below. The admin state, for the query that we are about to run needs to be set to Nevada and the disposition needs to be set to active. The township range and section is displayed in red in the exact format LR2000 wants. So first, drag your cursor over the township range and section highlighted by the orange box, right click and select copy. Then go back up in the pop-up and select click here to be directed to the public mining claims 
Geographic Index Report. On this report, we will select admin state equals Nevada, disposition equals active, or whatever you want to view. Then, in the second box, right-click and select Paste. Now that the query parameters are fulfilled, you can select OK and we're off. The report is generated showing the listing of all unpatented mining claims in that section and links to the serial register page reports. Let's go back to our map. Let's close the pop-up by clicking on the X in the upper right-hand corner of the pop-up, which is being pointed out by the orange arrow. Now let's select on the points that are plotted in the center of the section. Note, under the black arrow, the text is saying it is showing feature 4 of 54. This is because the triangles under the green arrow were utilized to navigate to feature 4 because the first three items that were selected were not what we wanted to view. We will again use the orange square to maximize the pop-up. This pop-up is displaying information on an individual claim listing, and it reads, This claim is located in the northeast-southeast portion of Township 17 North, Range 21 East, Section 32. The Comstock Load 107 claim is a load claim that was located on 12-20 of 2007. The serial number is NMC983360, and the lead serial is NMC983353. The claim was active as of 2-6 of 2020, and the last assessment year was 2020. For more information on this claim, you can search the BLM's LR2000 database by clicking here. For more information on the group of claims this claim is associated with, you can search the BLM's LR2000 database by clicking here. You must set the lead file number to yes and select apply. The claimant is Comstock Northern Exploration LLC. For more information on the claimant, you can search the BLM's LR2000 database by clicking here. The admin state will equal Nevada. The claimant name will equal Comstock Northern Exploration LLC, which has to be all caps, and the disposition should be set to active, then select OK. To search the BLM land records associated with this township and range, including master title plats, click here. Let's click on the first link listed in the pop-up. This will take you to the Public Mining Claim Serial Register page and will pull up the Serial Register report for that claim where you can view the claim details. Note, here we only have a one-page report. Let's return to our map. Now we will select the second link and run a report that will show all of the claims within the group or under the lead serial number to which this claim listing belongs. We need to specify that this is a lead file number by selecting yes in the drop-down outlined by the teal box on the left and then by pushing apply which is outlined by the teal box to the right. It is best to let the initial report load first before selecting yes and apply. Here is the report that shows all of the claim listings under this lead file number. Notice now we have a 69 page report. We can also search by claimant. Again, the parameters to run this report are listed under the link in the pop-up. And we can search the BLM records associated with the township range and section by clicking on the last link, which we will do now. So, when I click on this link, we are redirected to this page. The values are already populated in the appropriate boxes, and all of the land record type documents that apply have already been found, so you don't have to type a thing.
going back to the map. We will close this pop-up and go explore another, but before we leave our discussion about mining claims completely, we wanted to point out to you that you can also explore all unpatented mining claim listings, active, closed, or pending, that have ever been staked in a section or an area of interest as long as they were still active as of 1976 when the BLM first started recording mining claims pursuant to FLIPMA. The pop-ups are configured in a manner that is almost identical to the active mining claim listing points. Going back to the land record search, there is an invisible layer in the map that hosts information on individual sections. It is what is enabling the user to search by township range and section in the search bar but it also allows the user to search all land record type documents in Nevada land records when there are no claim listings present in a section. If you click in the center of a section, this pop-up will appear and we will click on the link. We are redirected to this page where again, the report has already been ran. You don't have to type in a thing and all land record documents are displayed. Let's close this pop-up by using the X in the upper right-hand corner of the pop-up and check out the mining districts pop-up. I'm going to select the Comstock mining district and use the square in the right-hand corner of the pop-up to expand the view. This pop-up gives the district name, the district classification, metallic versus non-metallic, and what commodities have been documented to exist or produced from the district, and some important links. The first link is to the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology's Mining District Files web application, where the user can search for documents that relate to the district of interest. The second link is to the USGS Mineral Resources interactive map. The next links relate to the BLM's Nevada land records. The mining district polygons displayed were generated by Tingley's 1998 Historic Mining Districts of Nevada report. Name designations in BLM Nevada land records don't always match Tingley's designation. In many instances, there are several names to choose from for a particular mining district. For example, the Comstock. In order to view all of the mineral connection sheets for the Comstock mining district, you need to know there are mineral connection sheets listed under all five names listed in the pop-up. All names listed in Nevada land records, even unknown and unspecified, have been linked with Tingley's Mining District's polygon shapefile that's displayed where possible. So now, when the user is looking for mineral connection sheets to locate patented mining claims, it is much e easier to find them. In the case of the Comstock Mining District, it is referred to by the following names in Nevada land record search. Flowery, Virginia, Silver Star, Gold Hill, Virginia, just Virginia, Virginia Gold Hill, and Virginia Silver Star. They are all listed here, so now you don't have to set up the search for every listing. You simply click on a link and we will be directed to the mineral connection sheets. And that's what we're going to do. When we do, we will be redirected to this page, which lists all of the mineral connection sheets for this mining district name designation. We will select one of the links, and here is the mineral connection sheet, available for download and for geo-referencing. Back to the map. Before we move on from mining districts, there is one new addition we would like to point out. 
If you turn on the Mining District's Database Files layer and click on a Mining District, a pop-up will appear. Then, click on the Mining District's Records under the Related Tables heading. The pop-up will change to display something similar to this. Then, click on the three dots in the lower right-hand corner of the pop-up and select View in Attribute Table. The Attribute Table will display showing links, if available, to various documents related to that mining district. Let's continue with our example and review the county information available in the map. We will turn the Mining District's Database Files layer off and turn the Mining Claims back on. When we click on a county's polygon, this is the pop-up that will appear. The pop-up has links to important county information. It can sometimes be difficult to navigate county websites and find the exact link you are looking for. We have compiled useful links for each county, including links to real property searches, interactive maps if they are available, PDF parcel maps, and the county recorder's page. So if we click on one of the links for Story County, we'll click on the Real Property Search, we are immediately taken to the Parcel Search page without having to search for its location. So we will go ahead and we will select that link. And here we are at the Assessor's Parcel Search form, which by this point, you should have all of the information you need and will be in the right spot in order to find the owner of a patented mining claim or piece of private property. Let's close this pop-up. And now we will look at the notices and plans layers. I have turned all of the layers on under the exploration and development section. All notices and plans have been pulled from the LR2000 database using the case established action code. If we click on a notice, a pop-up will display. We will again maximize the pop-up to view all of the text. The pop-up gives some general information on the notice, which includes the PLSS description, the commodity of interest, the case disposition, when the case was established, the total case acres, and the customer information. There are two report options presented here. The first is to pull up the case recordation serial register page for the notice specified in this pop-up. The second is to search for all case recordation serial register pages for notices or plans in the section. The parameters are given in the bottom of the pop-up. For this demo, we will only be looking at the report for the individual notice. We first need to copy the serial number, then we can click on the first link to be redirected to the case recordation serial register page. Here, we set the geostate to Nevada, and paste the serial number into the serial number box and push apply. Shortly after, a report that looks similar to this will appear, which includes data on the history of this notice as recorded in LR2000. The mining plans are configured exactly like the notices as are the exploration plans. A recent addition to the Nevada Mineral Explorer is the Historic Mineral Production layer under the Occurrences and Production category. Historic production consists of any production data reported to the Division of Minerals since 1987. If a site is selected, a pop-up will appear giving a general description of the mine, the total historic production, and the production figures reported for each year. And now I will pass it over to Rachel to give a quick tour of several MBMG hosted layers and pop-ups. 
In this part of the demonstration, we will explore pop-ups for some of the layers in the mineral resources, geology, technical reports, and reference data categories. We will start with the mineral resources category. All layers in this web application have been turned off, and I have selected the mineral resources icon in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. We are going to turn all the layers on in this layer category all at once by clicking the icon with the three horizontal lines and a check mark in the upper right hand corner of the mineral resources layer list. Click turn all layers on at the top of the drop down list. Now we are going to expand all the layers in this list at once by clicking on that icon again and selecting expand all layers. All of the layers in the mineral resources category are now turned on and expanded so that the individual layer symbology is visible. Notice that the geothermal wells layer is grayed out. This means we need to zoom in more to see the layer. So let's zoom in. The geothermal well layer is no longer grayed out and well locations are now visible on the map. Click on any one of the features shown on the map to open a pop-up and view more information about that specific data point. Use the button in the upper right-hand corner of the pop-up to advance through features, expand the pop-up, or close the pop-up. Click Zoom to to zoom to the layer. Select the three dots in the lower right-hand corner to pan to the selected point, add a marker, or view the selected point in the attribute table. Let's take a look at the attribute table next. Any layer can be viewed in the attribute table by clicking the three dots to the right of the layer in the layer list and selecting View in Attribute Table at the bottom of the drop down list. The attribute table can be resized by clicking the dark gray line at the top of the table and dragging up or down. When the attribute table is opened, the results are filtered by map extent. If you wish to view all of the data in the layer, click to turn off filter by map extent, shown with the orange arrow. Click on options, shown here with the green arrow, to filter results or to show or hide columns in the table. Columns in the attribute table can also be sorted or resized, similar to an Excel spreadsheet. To select records from the table, click in the open space to the left of the record shown here with an orange arrow. This will highlight the record in the table and on the map. If you do not see the record on the map, click Zoom to, shown here with the green arrow, and the map will pan to that record. Moving on to review some of the layers in the geology category. All mineral resource layers have been turned off and the attribute table closed for this portion of the demonstration. I have expanded the Stuart and Carlson geologic units layer and turned on contacts, faults, and geologic units. Click on any one of the units in the map to learn more about the unit in the pop-up. Click on a fault or contact to learn more about those features as well. Now let's check out the geologic map index layer. I have turned off the geologic unit layer and expanded and clicked to turn on the geologic map index layer. This layer contains NBMG and USGS map indexes. We are going to look at the NBMG indexes in this demonstration. I have also turned the legend on so we can see the symbology of the layer without having to expand all of the sublayers in the geologic map index layer. The layer shows map indexes at various scales. To learn more about what map might be available in a specific area, click on the map. A pop-up will appear containing the map title, author, publication year, scale, publisher, and a link to more information. In this case, MBMG Map 163 is the first record to appear. Clicking on the More Info link will take you to the NBMG shopping cart page where you can download a PDF or purchase a hard copy of the map. If you wish to search maps of a certain scale, make sure to turn off all index layers you are not interested in on the geology category layer list. Moving on, I have skipped over several other categories and layers since the pop-ups and layer functionality 
are the same as what you have seen so far, but I wanted to highlight the 43101 reports in the technical report category of this application. Again, I have turned off all of the other layers in the app and navigated to the technical reports category. The 43101 report layer is the only layer in this category for now. Clicking on a point will reveal a pop-up with the project name, company, county, notes, and a link to a PDF of the report. The report name contains the date of the report. Now let's move on to review some of the reference data. We are going to look at the land status layer first. This layer combines the surface management agency layer from the BLM with BLM districts and field offices, USFS national forests and ranger districts, and national parks and recreation areas. Click on an area in the map to view the land status information. Now let's take a look at the NAEP index. I have turned off all other layers and turned on and expanded the NAEP index layer. This layer contains quadrangles by latitude and longitude and quarter quads. The quarter quads are only visible beyond a certain scale, so let's zoom in to see those. Zoom in until you see a gray index grid and the quarter quad sublayer is no longer grayed out in the layer list. Here you can select an area you wish to view NAEP imagery for by clicking within a quarter quad grid. A pop-up appears with the quarter quad name, file name, and links to the 2006, 2009, 2010, 2013, 2015, or 2017 NAEP imagery. Click the link next to the year you are interested in to view and then download the georeferenced NAEP file. Depending on the size and your internet connection, the image may take some time to load in your browser. One last thing I'd like to share with you before we wrap up. Say you have configured your map with all of the layers turned on that you want and zoomed in perfectly to your project area. Then the unthinkable happens and your browser crashes or you accidentally close the tab. While your layers and configurations are not stored in the application, you can restore them. If you go back to the application website, you will see a small box appear in the bottom right hand corner of the browser window that reads, click to restore map extent and layers visibility where you left off. Click this box and your location and layers will be restored. However, this will not work if you have cleared your browsing history. We would like to acknowledge the project team whose names are listed on this slide. These are the people responsible for making this web application a valuable resource for the exploration community. We would like to thank you for joining us for this overview of the Nevada Mineral Explorer web application. We hope you now have the information you need to get started with this application and explore Nevada's mineral resources. If you need assistance, please feel free to contact either one of us and we will do our best to answer questions or resolve issues.